Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here and thank you for tuning in today. And today I will be hopefully solving a pesky oil leak on my son's 2005 Honda Civic with a 1.7 liter engine. Namely, the issue is there is oil leaking in the front and the back of the engine. Now you might remember from when I removed the transmission and then replaced the input shaft bearing and the clutch, I also replaced the rear main seal at that time and I believe that was a Honda seal. Well, I also, I didn't do an episode on this, but I also replaced the timing belt and water pump and at that time I replaced the cam seal and also the crank seal. Yet it seems to be leaking from both of those areas. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I also replaced the oil pan gasket, which I think got over tightened at some point and part of it was sticking out. Anyway, all that's been resolved yet there's still an oil leak, so what could it be? Well, you probably guessed from the title of this video, but I suspect that there's a problem with the thrust bearings, which I have here and I'm gonna replace in this video today. So now I'm gonna show you why I believe the thrust bearings need to be replaced in this 1.7 liter Honda engine. A closer inspection reveals that the oil appears to be leaking from the back here, but also from the front. There's a whole lot of oil down here. As I said, I've replaced the rear main seal, that's new, the uh, front crank seal, that is also new, and the oil pan gasket. And I made sure not to over tighten the oil pan gasket because that can sometimes cause a leak. But I believe the thrust bearing is bad and I'm gonna show you how I tested that to determine if that's the issue. I've placed a dial indicator on the crank pulley on the front of the crankshaft here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it all the way in one direction, either inwards or outwards, doesn't matter. Zero it up and then move it in the other direction. And that will, should give me the total amount of uh, back and forth play that this crankshaft has. And that's what thrust bearings do. They control the back and forth movement of the crankshaft. And if it's, well, excessive, it could cause an oil leak like you have here, or maybe worse if they get really bad. Anyway, let's see how much play I have in this crankshaft. When you place the dial indicator, try to make it so that it's directly in line with the crankshaft and not off to one side or the other, uh, cause that can mess up the reading. So try to get it as straight on as you can. I'm going to try to pry it out a little bit and then I'm going to zero things up. That looks like it's about zero. So now I'm all pushed out this way. So now I'm going to try to pull it back in the opposite direction. That's quite a bit. <laughs> so the limit is 18 thousandths and I think 14 thousandths is worn out. Uh, I'm going to pull it in this time and try to pull it in and zero it out and see if I can get an accurate reading. Okay. So zero it out there. I'm not pushing on the pry bar too hard, just trying to seat it. So <laughs> that says 20. You can almost hear it physically clunk. When I move it back and forth. And I wanted to catch the balancer up above the rubber so when I'm prying on it, I'm not affecting the reading by pushing it out against that rubber insert that's inside the balancer. This problem is particularly prevalent with manual transmission vehicles. And the reason for that is, is every time you step on the clutch on a manual transmission, you're actually pushing the crankshaft forward a little bit, thus putting a little bit more stress and wear on that thrust bearing. Now, to sort of illustrate this point, I'm gonna get inside the vehicle and we'll take some readings just with me stepping on the clutch to see how much the crankshaft moves. The movement that you're gonna see now is strictly based on uh, pushing the clutch. So I'm just gonna depress the clutch and we'll see how much it moves. I just reviewed the footage and it looked like the first time I depressed it, it moved a lot. But then the times after that, it just moved a little bit. But keep in mind, this engine is rotating, so it's dynamic. It's gonna be sort of floating back and forth the entire time. And this is the reason I believe this oil leak is happening and being aggravated. Let's uh, get the oil drained out, drop the oil pan, and get a look at what we need to do to replace those thrust bearings. Before I drain the oil, I'm actually gonna start with some cleaning. While everything's together, I can avoid getting stuff into places that I don't want it to get into, such as inside the engine. I mean, we are gonna drop the main bearings after all. This will also help me identify if the leak comes back, if everything's all cleaned up. That feels like a better starting point. 
And since I've already done this oil pan gasket very recently, it's not gonna be that difficult. Just need to drop the exhaust down and then there's a brace back here that needs to be removed. And then there's just the fasteners around the oil pan. All of this after I drain the oil. Just gonna use a bungee cord to hold the exhaust up back here. That opens up all kinds of room. With that shielding removed, it's a lot easier to get to those. Well, in fact, that's the only way to get to the bolts that hold the oil pan on, which we're to the point where all we have to do is remove those. I used another bungee cord to hold the exhaust pipe even more out of the way. Now we have complete access. Let's get this oil pan off. Now I put a new gasket on the uh, drain plug last time. It's still loose and uh, not all smashed out. So I've I believe I can reuse it with confidence, but normally you'd want to replace that uh, if you remove the drain plug, especially if it's getting worn out. Makes it easy when you just had it off. That's what we're after right there. You may look at this and say, oh man, how to put all the main caps together? Actually, that adds a lot of strength to the bottom end of this engine and in my opinion helps it punch above its weight a little bit as far as durability. First thing to remove is going to be the pickup which there's a couple of 10 millimeter fasteners uh, on either side here and then I'm going to remove all of the fasteners holding this main bearing cap assembly on. Now keep in mind there are bearings in here so when you drop it down do it slowly the crank and everything will stay in place it's not going to go anywhere uh, but do this slowly so that you don't drop the bearings on the floor that would be bad. You don't have to put it in time or anything, you're just dropping this part of it down. And when you do remove it, you'll notice that I'm gonna start at the outside and sort of spiral my way in and do the middle ones last. So start at the outer ones and then work your way towards the center when you remove. Oh, not that much of a mess. I think these are all the same length. They're 14 millimeter. I don't think it'll drop down when I take the last bolt out, but be prepared just in case. I think we'll have to give it a couple of love taps. So I'll leave this bolt part way in, like part way threaded like that, to ensure that when it does come loose, it doesn't drop on the floor. And I'm gonna use a plastic mallet to knock things loose. Now I'm gonna very carefully drop this whole assembly down. Should have mentioned, no matter what you do, this will make a mess. I'll be cleaning that bolt. All these bearings look really, really good. The dark spots are wear, but there's not a whole lot, not a whole lot at all. Nothing I'm concerned about anyway. More importantly, the crankshaft looks excellent. Because that's what the bearings are there to do. They're really there to protect the crankshaft. So they're kind of a sacrifice if need be. But these look fine. And this is where our thrust bearings are. Right here, you might see an edge of them. But that is what we're after. To get these out, kind of simple. But the most important thing is make sure you get them back in the correct way. And I'm gonna show you in this video, but I'm just gonna go up in with my pocket screwdriver. Actually, I'll do it from the back so you can see it better. You just push it up you'll note that those oil passages faced towards the crankshaft make sure when you put this in that they face the exact same way otherwise you'll be in trouble so now I'll take out the other side it'll be easier now with this one out of the way yeah it's like super easy with that one out of the way there it is 
here's the part number for new ones for this engine. But I can't stress enough how like all engines use thrust bearings or some form of you know, uh, maintaining crankshaft end play, usually using thrust bearings. Uh, this is the procedure for this engine, but if you have a similar issue, find out what type of bearings you have and this is what you're after. Let's measure the thickness of these and compare it to new ones and see how much of a difference we're making. I'm gonna do these in inches. I could do them in millimeters also. All right, this one, 0.095 inches. That's pretty uniform throughout. Let's check this one, 895. Also similar. I think these ends are a little narrower. Yeah, they are. So the inside is thicker than the ends. And that's with both of these. Because I can, here it is in millimeters. So 2.41 millimeters. And then the ends, 2.31, 2.28 on that one. 2.42, 2.42. Well, that's an old worn bearing. Let's see what a new bearing is. 2.42, 01, 2.41. Interesting how the new one is not that different from the old one. Here's the other new one. 2.42, 2.41, 0.39. And I think they do these thinner at the end so that they can be inserted easier. Well, that's interesting, 2.41. Uh, okay, so there it is. Look at this bearing and the way it's worn. See how it's like down towards this inner part? This caliper probably isn't the best, me best method for measuring these. Something with a pointed end on it, a micrometer, would probably be better and more accurate. So if there's a taper to this, like I believe there is, when this clamps down, it's gonna clamp down on the highest part. So it's really not gonna be accurate. It's gonna tell you the highest point which might not be worn. Let's try this in here and see what that's at. Okay, so 2.39 towards the inside. Yeah, 2.39 towards the inside, 2.41. Weirdly, the new ones don't measure out all that different than the old ones. I'm here, I've got new bearings. Let's put them in and check the end play. That should tell us hopefully more. Before I install these, I've got a little bit of this extremely old uh, engine pre-lube, so when you assemble engines, this is a type of lubricant for that. So I'm gonna apply some of this to these bearings since I know it's gonna stay attached to them. And this should ensure that they have lubrication when, they st when I start it up. Installing these is just the opposite of what you just did. Remember the takeaway is that you want the side with the slots to face the crankshaft. It really is that easy. It was harder to get them out. Let's get the uh, main cap back up in there. I'm gonna put a little more of that lube on the inside of those bearings before I install it. Get it installed, snug the fasteners down, and then we'll torque them. Because I have this, I'm gonna use this on the main bolts. That's what I use for assembling performance engines. And these people, all they do is make fasteners. And this lubricant is specifically designed to make sure that you get the optimum uh, torque values, which bolts are springs. And it's not about the torque that you apply to it, it's about the stretch or the tension that this fastener creates when it's at its final torque. This lubricant helps it get there uh, better. And something to keep in mind is, it's just as important to have the lubrication underneath the bolt head because that's what twists, because you're working against the resistance of all this stuff. A little bit of this on each of the main bolts before installation should help ensure that I get the best torque possible out of these, which this is hypercritical. This is the crankshaft. This is literally where the power happens or where the power is transferred. So we wanna make sure that this is right. You just need to put it between the washer and the bolt head. These are all the same length, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Let's make sure it goes back in the same way you took it out. Kinda only goes in one way. Once you get a couple of these in, you're kinda safe. Now you want to do just the opposite of what you did when you remove these and tighten from the center out. And I'm not going to tighten these, I'm just running these down. Let's 
So there is one longer one. I did not notice that. If I'm gonna guess, it went in here. Guess right. So the longer one goes in the middle in the back. Torque specs are in two stages. First they go to 18 foot pounds and then 38 foot pounds. Just the opposite of what I did when I took them off. Start at the center and spiral your way out. And then 38 for the final. And that's that. We'll get the pickup tube on there, oil pan, and then we'll check everything again. The pickup tube has a paper gasket on it. This one is undamaged, I'm going to reuse it. Use quarter inch tools to prevent over torquing. This doesn't need a whole lot of torque. And this is where doing the job twice pays off. I don't have to worry about cleaning anything up again. So how am I gonna tighten these? Yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna start from the center and work my way out. And I'm gonna use this hand tool. And as soon as I see the gasket start to move, I'm gonna quit. I recommend coming back after like, well, I recommend checking them about every oil change because they can work loose. The gasket does shrink over time and does require periodic snugging up. But I do it this way to help prevent damage to the gasket. I just do it all by hand and I use a driver like this to help uh, limit the leverage that I'm able to apply. I've also used a cordless drill and put it on a setting to where it won't over tighten. That's worked really well and it was pretty efficient. Yeah, you should see the gasket like compress, but not squeeze out. Let's get the rest of this back together and, well, actually we could check things right now. But first, a final cleaning. I don't have a whole lot of confidence this made a lot of difference based on the thickness of the bearings, the new ones compared to the old ones, they're pretty much exactly the same. Although, I'll be honest, it's better because, oh, there's that clunk. I was like getting a clunk before. New is supposed to be 0 0.004. I'm gonna say that this is definitely less than what we were doing previously. Like maybe 10 or 12, maybe 10 thousandths. Yeah, I'd say about 10 or 12 thousandths of movement. It's hard to say because you can see that the dial indicator is sort of going all over the place because when I push it to one side, it puts tension on it. And, but then when I go to move, that tension's released and then it moves a little bit and a little bit here, well, is a lot because this is supposed to measure small amounts. Let's see how much movement we get when we depress the clutch. Judging by that last clip, it didn't move all that much, not as much as it did the, the first time. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this all back together, put some oil in it, have my son drive it around for a week, and then we'll recheck to see if those leaks have gotten worse, if they're the same, if they're better or anything, and that way we can truly decide if this was worth the effort or not. Everything's back together. Here's the way things look now, right after the repair. I'm gonna drive it around for a bit, come back, recheck, see if we made a difference, hopefully a positive one. One more thing before this leaves today. D-series are famous for leaking at the distributor O-ring, but on this one, it does not use a distributor. It's got a distributorless ignition. So they just put a cam plug on the side here, and I've already removed the EGR valve here uh, so that I could gain access to it, and I've cleaned underneath it. One thing about oil leaks, start up high and then work your way down. When I did the timing belt and water pump, I should have also mentioned that I replaced the valve cover gasket and grommets and all those things in there too. When you're dealing with oil leaks, like I say, start high and work your way down. But this 
is another potential oil leak. I don't even believe you have to take much else apart. It's just a plastic plug. I think I can knock it out and put the new one in. Let me show you the new part and I'll show you why I think that. So here's the cam plug and the part number from Honda. The reason I believe I can just uh, pop the old one out and pop this one in is because look at these little plastic tabs. They're kind of designed to just push in like that. So if I'm successful in getting all the bits of the old one out, I can put this one right in. And if I'm not successful, well, that would mean that I've got to take the uh, valve cover off and deal with it that way. I don't mind if this breaks, so long as it breaks in my favor. Just like that, it all came out. One piece. Just gonna grab a little bit of this oil and on the new one, just gonna put a little bit on the O-ring so that it goes in easier. There we are. Boom, done. Now I'll clean that oil out that came out when I removed it and uh, cleaned it underneath also so we don't get that as a false positive. We still got a leak down there. And then we'll be back in a little bit of time after we've got some miles on this. Speaking of mileage, we're starting out here. 171501. Well, I'm sad to report after a short time driving, it's still leaking, which I'm a little disappointed by, but I think I know what's going on here. Rear main seal's been replaced, that's new, and a Honda part. Front seal's been replaced. I can't remember, but I think that was also a Honda part, but even if it's aftermarket, it is also new. And we just did the thrust bearings, even though the measurements said that they were kind of in spec. I thought it would make for a good video. So that just leaves one thing. The oil pan gasket, and this is an original equipment one. The one I put on there I know is aftermarket, so I'm gonna call that because there's really nothing else there, like I said. Uh, I checked the stuff up high, I didn't find anything there. The only thing I could possibly find is maybe around the head gasket, but that could have been oil that leaked down from that leaking valve cover and settled around that area. I don't know for sure. Anyway, I'm gonna go in, replace the oil pan gasket, and we'll be back to see if I fixed it. You keep trying until you do, right? Not wanting to throw away the oil that I just put into it. This, is, this looks super dirty from the outside, but actually it's super clean on the inside. I bought this specifically for uh, times like this where I wanted to try to save some oil. Also, when I put it back into the engine, I've got some paint strainer uh, filters that I'm gonna use when I pour it into the engine to help prevent any debris that may be in here from getting into the engine. Got the oil pan off. My areas of concern are right in here. You can see the dampness. This is actually the back of the oil pan, whereas it's dry underneath where the gasket was over here. But especially here in the front, you can really see some dampness there. Now granted, some of this is from when I dropped it down, but I think it sort of gives kind of an indication where it might be leaking. Let's go over to the engine. The gasket is still in place. But as I said, it's those areas where it goes under where I have the most concern. On the bench here, I have the new Honda gasket and the old uh, gasket that was on there. And I just decided to do some measurements to see uh, how similar or dissimilar they were. And I realized that this one has been on the engine and it's likely compressed, but I'm gonna say it hasn't been on there that long. So as far as how much compression, it's difficult to say. Anyway, I am noticing some differences particularly in these areas of concern, like back here, thickness uh, for this guy is about 3.89 millimeters. Thickness on the one I just took off, 3.63. I don't know if you can see that. Now the front, 3.67 millimeters. The front on the one I just took off, actually this is a little closer here, uh, maybe not. So this one's 3.56. Again, this could just be compression, this says that it's 2.81 or 82 millimeters. Thickness of this one is 2.77. Is that little bit of difference the difference? I honestly don't know, but it is a difference. And well, we're, we're looking for some kind of cause to this. So this is, this is all I got right now. I think I found something. So right up here on that front stud, you see that bump? The other stud doesn't have it. That's actually part of the gasket, the old gasket. 
And I just pulled off one from there that was from the old gasket, but that one I think is from the old, old original gasket. That would create a gap right there, which could cause an issue. So I think I might be onto something. I'm gonna remove that now. I'll take it off and I'll show it to you. Uh, but that stud should look like that stud, not like that. This, as I said, there were actually two. I just tossed the other one uh, towards the trash can and I haven't been able to find it. But these were, I guess, double stacked. And this will cause a gap in the gasket, which would cause a leak. Maybe we found it. I also went and checked all the other studs to make sure that uh, there was nothing else similar anywhere else. I didn't find anything. I just put little dabs of Honda Bond where the mating surfaces of the metal meet. There's just four different spots for that. It's all back together and here's a look at what it looks like now. I'm gonna fill it up with oil, drive it for a while. We'll check back in. Well, we'll see if we solved it. I'm gonna start this closing off by saying that the thrust bearings had nothing to do with the oil leaks on this engine. Not that worn thrust bearings or badly worn thrust bearings couldn't cause an oil leak like this, but it's not gonna be the first thing on my list that I'm gonna check as far as the cause of an oil leak. However, you did walk away with what thrust bearings are and what they do, also where they're located and how to replace them on this D-Series engine, as well as how to check them. Now, I did have some difficulty checking the free play or the play in that crankshaft. That part is gonna be tricky, so be very mindful of that. But if you do hear like a clunk as you're moving it back and forth, that could be an indication that those thrust bearings are pretty worn. So maybe that's what you look for. And if you have access to a dial indicator, hopefully you can find the spec and check it against that. Now I did solve the oil leak on the front of this engine and that was during the replacement of the oil pan gasket. Uh, particularly when I went in there the second time and found this part of this remnant of the previous gasket that was in there. So if you are replacing an oil pan gasket and you are trying to address an oil leak, look for these things stuck on the studs that may still be up on there. And if they are, remove them before installing the new gasket. I do still have leaks on the back of this engine, which I will address in the next video, which I will link down in the description. So, and that will be the replacement of the head gasket on this, but there's still a few more things involved with that. So be sure to catch that video to find out what leaks uh, need to be addressed on this engine still. But I can assure you that I have addressed those leaks and it is now bone dry after a long period of time. So I have confirmed that I have finally eradicated the leaks in this engine. And I'm sorry I didn't do that for you in this video, but I will do it in the next one. Again, I'll link that in the description along with additional videos and information that are useful to you. I'm also gonna put a link to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you go if you have automotive questions. Thank you so much for watching today. Remember, I post videos on Friday, so please stop back and see me then. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I will see you next time.